Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation and chronic daily migraine survivor. I am here today with Shirley Kessel. Shirley is the executive director of Miles for Migraine. She also happens to be the committee liaison for the Pediatric Migraine Registry. Uh, she also is the mother of two daughters with migraine, which might be the most important thing that we talk about today. Hi, Shirley. How are you? Hi, Lindsay. Thanks Hi. for having me today. Thanks for being here. So Shirley is here today to talk about something that is very near and dear to her heart and to my heart and hopefully to many of you who are watching. And that is, as I said, the Pediatric Migraine Registry. Uh, I am a person who, as many of you know, had migraine daily from even before I was in preschool. Back then, so many people didn't even know that kids could get migraine, so I didn't get a diagnosis for many, many years. Now, not only do we know kids get migraine, but we have this awesome registry to collect data and find out how we can better serve and help these kids. So, um, Shirley, let's start. Why don't you tell us how you became interested in the Pediatric Migraine Registry? Right, Lindsay. So you just mentioned I actually have three daughters and two have migraine. Mm -hmm. And the difference of having and not having migraine are like night and day. Right, and right. so when my youngest daughter was diagnosed and had to drop out of high school, it was a very isolating experience for her and for her parents, myself and my and her dad. And so really we needed to find out more ways to advocate. And this is a really important advocacy piece that uh, parents are typically so desperate and that we'll do anything to help our kids get better. And this is really something that's so hands-on that anyone can do. And when I found out that this was available for families, I just was so excited because it's really high time that we do something like this. Yes. So what is the goal of the registry and how will the information in this registry uh, that we get from the kids who are involved be used? Well, obviously, we need to increase awareness about migraine in kids. It's, it's very, very well, uh, not, not very well known in what's happening with kids in school and how to work with these kids. Right. We need to have more disease funding. We need an increase in treatment options. And the really um, good part about this is that kids and parents can have access to future clinical trials of both drugs and interventions. So biobanking is something that is um, used to help identify biomarkers. And right. you probably could explain that better than I could. Um, <laughs> and also access to migraine diary applications and validations of the migraine diary application for future use will be collected in this program. Right. I mean, I think the biobanking, just to comment, that is hugely important because at this point, migraine is an invisible disease. And we all feel like we have the burden of proving that it exists. Um, and so I do think that the biomarkers and the biobanking is, is hugely important for these kids and, and all of us with migraine. Um, so let's, let's get some information out there um, for parents who might be watching and wondering if their kid can be involved. What is the age range of children that they are enrolling? So the ages are four to 17 years of age, diagnosed with migraine with or without aura. Mm -hmm. uh, the kids will be followed for up to 12 months at three month intervals uh, with interval recording of clinical data at study sites and self-reported via mobile health application that they're using as well as the biobanking. Okay. And, um, do they need a formal diagnosis of migraine? I think that we've, we've talked about they do. The physicians will, they need to know that they have migraine. So you, you, they probably need to go to these sites and make sure with right. these doctors that this is the diagnosis the child has, correct? Right, the sites will be making the diagnosis, the formal diagnosis. And uh, again, it's migraine with or without aura. That's as per the, the international classification of headache yeah, um, and they're also looking for cyclic like vomiting syndrome as well as abdominal migraine. Oh, that's important to know. So mm -hmm. if uh, parents watching, if your kids have cyclic vomiting syndrome or abdominal migraine, um, we also, you know, want them in the registry. So I believe there is around 13 sites enrolling kids. Um, and let's make sure people know where to go to find where these sites are. Is there a website that they can go to? 
Yes, absolutely. If uh, folks go to the milesformigraine.org website and under the events tab where we have our youth events uh, website page, they can go there and find the direct link that will take them right to clinicaltrials.gov, okay. uh, which is a great resource for parents looking for any type of trial for any disease state. Right. Okay, so I think that the big question is going to be um, for anyone watching is, is, is this going on anywhere near me? So can you list off for us um, the states at least or the cities where these sites are located? Yeah, absolutely. Here we go. So San Francisco, Colorado right. Springs, Wilmington, Delaware, Louisville, Kentucky, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Kansas City, Missouri, mm -hmm. St. Louis, Missouri, Omaha, Nebraska, Akron, Ohio, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Providence, Rhode Island, Columbia, South Carolina, and Burlington, Vermont. Okay, and if someone wants to be involved and they don't live immediately near one of those places, what do you think they should do? I think they, the only thing they really can do is, you know, go to the closest city that is near them and see if possibly they're a candidate and they can call there's information on the on the clinicaltrials.gov web page that gives all the information about the study they can call or email the contact person that's listed there okay um so uh who is there an email or any like one phone number that they can use um for any larger broader questions Yes, yeah, so if they go to the uh, clinicaltrials.gov, there are actually two email addresses available under the contact section. Is there anything else you would like people to know about the registry? I think that um, it's important for parents and families to know that this is a study that's really imperative to helping to find a cure for migraine because these, this data collection is gonna be used for many years down the road. And who knows what we're gonna be able to do with it. They're already talking about doing other studies based on the data registry, the registry data that they collect. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also important to maybe just factually to know that Putting this study together is not something that's easily done. They received, we received input from therapeutic area experts, the Food and Drug Administration, the National Institute of Health, mm -hmm. patient and parent advocates, uh, health technology partners, drug developers, and site-based clinical investigators. So a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of information had to be collected before this even got started. So this is a very robust trial mm -hmm. and it's something that I would say, it's not even something you should think about. If you are in one of these cities and you can participate, you are really gonna make a difference in the life of your own child and if not your own child, certainly. That's what in, I was gonna say. In kids, yeah, that are gonna be affected down the road. This could be, you know, it, it could be a grandchild. Mm -hmm. It could be anyone because we know this is a hereditary disease. Correct, yes. And um, mm -hmm. what I was going to say is the way to help your own child is to forward research and education into migraine if that is what they have. And this is the way to do it. So if you live in a place where you can get your child in this registry, it's hugely important. Uh, and uh, go back and look at the information we gave on how to contact and how to get online and do this. And I hope everyone gets involved. So thank you so much for listening and thank you Shirley for being on today. And join us again next week for Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. Goodbye.